Today, we're continuing our discussion on mathematical optimization. In this video, we'll learn about two important types, global optimization and local optimization. Understanding the difference between them is key to solving many real-world problems in data science and AI. In optimization, the goal is usually to either minimize or maximize a function. For example, if we're trying to minimize a function f of x, the optimizer will test different values of x to find the one that gives the lowest value of the function. But sometimes, the function we're minimizing is not a smooth, single valley curve. Instead, it might have multiple dips or valleys. That's where the concepts of local and global minima come in. Let's now talk more about local and global minima, starting with the local minimum. So, what is a local minimum? A local minimum is a point where the function has a lower value than all nearby points. In other words, the optimizer finds a spot where it can't go any lower by taking small steps in either direction. This is how most optimizers work. They start with a random value of x. Then they slightly increase x and compute the value of f of x. Next, they slightly decrease x and compute f of x again. By comparing these two results, f of x plus delta and f of x minus delta, the optimizer decides which direction to move in. It continues taking small steps, adjusting x until it reaches a point where no nearby step improves the result. This example assumes x is a single variable or one-dimensional. If x is an array of values, which is common in real problems, the optimizer needs to make small changes to each element in the array and see how the function responds. Regardless of whether x is one value or many, the goal is the same. The optimizer looks for the best value of x that gives the smallest f of x in that local region. But here's the catch. A local minimum may not be the absolute lowest value of the function. There could be a deeper valley, a better solution, somewhere else in the function's domain. That's where the difference between local and global minimum becomes important. In practical optimization problems, especially those in machine learning and deep learning, objective functions often have multiple local minima. This means an optimizer might find a local minimum which is not globally the best solution. This usually happens if it uses gradient-based methods like gradient descent. To find the global minimum, not just a local one, we often need more advanced techniques. Here are a few commonly used methods. Random restarts. This means running the optimizer multiple times, starting from different initial points. The idea is that different starting points might lead to better, possibly global, solutions. Simulated annealing. This is a probabilistic method. It occasionally accepts worse solutions on purpose, helping the optimizer escape from local minima. Genetic algorithms, inspired by evolution, these methods explore a wide solution space using operations like selection, crossover, and mutation. They are especially useful for complex or noisy optimization problems. Grid search and random search. These are simple but effective methods for small problems. They work best when the input space is limited and well-defined. These techniques are useful when the function is non-convex or when we suspect multiple local optima. Now the elephant in the room. Are global minimums better or more desirable in deep learning? The short answer is not necessarily. In deep learning, our goal isn't just to get the lowest possible training loss. What we really care about is how well the model performs on unseen data. This is called generalization. Reaching the global minimum of the loss function means we've found the absolute best fit to the training data. But that often leads to overfitting, where the model memorizes the training data too well and fails to perform on new inputs. That's why, in practice, a good local minimum, one that gives us low loss but also generalizes well, is usually preferred. In fact, research has shown that flatter local minima, those with gentle curvature, tend to generalize better than sharp or deep minima, even if they're not the absolute lowest point. And because deep learning loss surfaces are very complex, with millions of parameters, there are many local minima that work just as well as the global one. So in deep learning, global minima 
are not required. What we need is a good, generalizable local minimum that works well in real-world scenarios. So when do we actually prefer global optimization? We prefer global optimization when the problem has a single, clear, best solution, and we want to be sure we found it. This is common in fields like engineering or operations research, where the goal might be to minimize cost, weight, or energy use, and only the absolute best solution is acceptable. Global optimization is also important when the objective function has many local minima, and some of them perform much worse than the global one. For example, in problems like route planning, network design, or drug discovery, finding the true global minimum can make a big difference in outcome. We also rely on global optimization when the solution must be guaranteed to be optimal, especially in critical applications like finance, control systems, or safety critical systems. Finally, if the search space is small or well-bounded, global methods like grid search or branch and bound are practical and effective. So, while deep learning usually accepts a good local solution, global optimization is still essential in many structured and high-stakes problems. For the generalization aspect of deep learning, local optimization is more popular. In the upcoming video, we will discuss more on optimization especially what properties are required in an objective function for local optimization. Thank you for watching.